But Paul writes to the Philippian church, and that's not all God gave you. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Paul said, just like He blessed you with faith, Philippian church, He blessed you with the privilege of suffering for Him. We don't like terms like that in America. And we never thought they were necessary before. Folks, if the Lord tarries much longer and things don't change in Washington, these verses are extremely relevant to us. So we must not be terrified by the grace of God and for, to not be terrified, we need to begin to grab a hold of what this peace of God which passes all understanding is. Now, John fourteen twenty seven, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So, Jesus is saying, I'm giving you peace. But then he said, the peace I'm giving you isn't the kind of peace you got in this world. There is a peace that life can give you on this planet. But it can be a fleeting peace dependent upon circumstances. But Jesus said, I'm going to give you a different peace than that. I'm going to give you a peace that isn't anything like the peace the world gives you. I'm going to even know there are unbelievers that you know at times everything's going well in their life and they're at peace. But you stir the pot. Bad times come and they're not at so much peace. Jesus said, the peace I give you is different than that peace. Paul writes, it's a peace that's beyond understanding. Jesus said, as we shared up above in the review... Uh, in verse 33 of chapter 16 these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace in the world you shall have tribulation but be a good share of overcome the world so he said here's what the world is going to give you things that press upon you that's what the Greek word for tribulation means the world is going to give you pressure but he said in me there's peace in the world there's pressure I tell you, wherever you're at, whatever job you work, they always want you to do more than you think you can do. Pressure everywhere. Pressure when you get bad medical reports. Pressure when you're facing elections and you oh my God, help us. Uh, Pressure everywhere. Amen? That's what the world gives. That's what the word tribulation means there. A pressing on you. The world gives this, but Jesus said, be of good cheer because I give you peace. Most of you know who I'm voting for. But I'm going to tell you something. Whether the person I vote for wins or loses, my peace does not rest in Him. My peace rests in God. Amen? I guess when I said Him, you kind of gave, that kind of gave it away. But anyway... Um, we can't put our peace in folk when we put our peace in folk we're wrapping ourselves to the peace the world gives we got to put our peace in Jesus Jesus says I give you a peace alright now Jesus peace is different than the world put her over if you would what does this phrase mean peace which passes all understanding let me read you that portion of the verse in four other translations. In the Bible in basic English, it is rendered a peace which is deeper than all knowledge. The contemporary English version, a peace that no one can completely understand. In the Good News Bible, a peace which is far beyond human understanding. In the translation called God's Word, it's peace which goes beyond anything we can imagine. When Barb found out she had cancer, and I know a lot of faith preachers would have been mad at me, but when we got the bad news, she cried. 
I was a bit devastated myself. You don't know what tomorrow holds when you hear those words. Jack heard those words. Jason didn't. Uh, we heard him about Jason. He didn't hear the words. But um, it's horrible. You don't want to hear those words. And so unlike faith preachers, I told Barb, we're going to give ourselves one day to cry. And then tomorrow we're going to get up and fight. No more crying. So sometimes there's a need to let the emotion out. You bury a wife of 47 years, 50-some with Paul, her husband. You bury people you've lived with that long, and you're not going to be flying like an eagle that first day. You've got to give yourself a little time to grieve. And then begin to shake it off and think, all right, there's still life here. Still got to live. So we gave ourselves the day. But the most amazing thing of that whole journey, not only to me but to Barb, was the extreme peace God gave her. More than anything she had ever experienced in her life. Heard the worst news about her that she had ever heard. Now, I think if she said, is that the worst news I ever heard about cancer? I think she'd put what she heard about Jason above that. Uh, when you have a newborn, you find out he's got cancer. Um, but in many, many years, it's the worst news she ever heard. And we did. We just moaned and groaned for a day. And then we got up and said, all right, we're going to believe God for healing. Jesus took her infirmities, bore her sicknesses. By his stripes she is healed in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever you ask in faith, believe in, you shall receive. And you start standing on the word. But, the amazing thing to me, I shared with you from the other side of this sheet where Paul said, don't be terrified by anyone. Well, the enemy there wasn't a person, it was a disease. And Barb refused to be terrified by that disease. Why? Because God said in this world you'll have pressure. Jesus did, but I give you peace. And the peace that He gives when you embrace it is a peace that makes no sense to the mind. It's above all understanding. You can't figure it out. I should be distressed. I get distressed at little things. When I got six vowels or six consonants in a word game and I think, how can I make words with this? I get distressed and Sophie runs to the other room. But in big battles, it's amazing how God can come in and calm the water. Real yet. So there's a peace that passes understanding. Now what does that mean in the real world? God gives us a peace in our difficult times that we shouldn't have, logically speaking, which we can't figure out why we have it, which is simply beyond reason. Now, I put a note there. This is not resignation to the inevitable I'm talking about. It isn't, oh well, I'm going to die. I'm not talking about just resigning to the overwhelming bad news. This peace isn't simply something that helps you resign to the inevitable. But, Rather, it's an amazing realization that God is in complete charge in the situation that we are facing. Now, what does... You put that back over and read that verse. This peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. This is, this is neat. The peace of God will keep your mind. Keep you from going insane. Keep you from being overcome with anxiety, fear. Keep you getting up in the morning with a smile. But what does it mean when it says it will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus? It will keep your hearts and minds. In the Greek, remember New Testament written in Greek, the Greek word for the expression shall keep. 
I love this. There's Greek dictionary. I could have put Vincent's definition. I could have put um, uh, Robertson's definition. Those are the three Greek helps that I look at a lot to figure out a word. It's to it's to guard or protect by a military guard. The peace of God shall keep my mind. Paul was writing by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, this peace of God which you'll never figure out is like a military can put sentries around you to protect your mind. Is that need or what? The peace of God that passes understanding becomes a military convoy to protect your mind. It'll keep your mind. Turn around and look at someone and say, Wow. I'd have never thought that about peace. But that's exactly what it means. It'll keep your minds and your heart in Christ Jesus. So, that's what the word means. So, here's what we're saying. This peace of God, when we realize, in other words, I'm not talking about realizing what something means, but we realize experientially the peace of God. When we realize the peace of God at work in our lives, it is not some passive thing. It, it is an emboldening force that realizes God is present with us at that very moment. This peace of God is a resisting army that fights back fear and doubt. It overcomes those invading foes. The world can't give you this kind of peace. Only God can. Jesus said, I'm giving you peace the world can't give you. Not like the world. And he said, this peace is going to set up camp guarding you amidst of the onslaught of the enemy. Why would a teenage girl stand up in a lunchroom and call by when a guy with a gun said, if you're a Christian, stand up and she knew good and well what would happen. She stood up and he shot her dad. Who do you think won there? She won. He died later that day too. One of them went to heaven. Girl. Guess which one it was. It wasn't the one who shot himself. It was the one who got shot by him, her. She's been in heaven ever since. I don't want to die today. But you know if I die today? I win. For me to live as Christ, to die is gain. Nobody in this planet can beat me. They might kill me. They might hurt me physically. Persecution can hurt. But they can't beat me. A thousand years from now, I will have been singing the joy of the Lord in heaven for a thousand years. Amen? You can't shut me up. Just think, aren't heaven nobody will try to shut you up. Uh, they can't shut you up. That's right. Amen. You can do all the shouting you want up there. Amen. So, they can't beat you. They can't shut you up because you win. So, the peace of God somehow brings upon us a realization. We can read the Bible and understand everything doesn't end well humanly thinking. James was beheaded. Stephen was stoned to death. It doesn't always end the way we want. Superman doesn't come flying in at the last second. I can't even get Mighty Mouse to fly in, let alone Superman. But I tell you, if they kill me, the minute I close, breathe my last and close my eyes, Jesus is taking me by the hand and say, come on home. You can't lose.